name is Peter Cook. Um, I live in the, in the village of Hockerton, a local resident, probably one of the nearest to the actual turbine. I am an investor in the turbine. Both my wife and myself have put money into it. Simon Tilly contacted a few people he knew in the village to organise a means of lowering our carbon footprint, of improving the sustainability of the village of Hockerton. I'm Simon Tilly, a member of Sustainable Hockerton, and I'm also a director of Sustainable Hockerton. We worked together as a village to come up with some ideas through village meetings and as a group we decided to move forward with the idea of purchasing a wind turbine to generate money to pay, for, uh, pay back the investors and to pay for village initiatives to reduce carbon emissions. We chose wind because it was the best value for money. Uh, for, the, for the money spent and the income generated, it was the most efficient. And we were very lucky to find a local uh, landowner that has a nice smooth high hill, which is, was fantastic and was prepared to work with us. You need to put a wind turbine in a windy location. Now, how do you find that out? The southwest is where most of our wind comes from. And if you can see the horizon, i.e. there's no obstacles in the way, it's probably going to be a nice windy site. So that's what we did here. We did a, uh, an interesting exercise in drawing a, a map. And around each house we did a 500 metres uh, radius circle and only chose sites that were more than 500 metres away from anybody's house. So we had lots of village meetings to try and find out what people wanted and uh, I suppose address any fears that some residents had and, and there were people that came along that were definitely opposed to the idea of having a wind turbine for the village. There were objections, um, mainly from people who felt it was going to be too close to them, too overwhelming in scale and size. We tried to address those as best as we could and, and then I think doing a public survey which shows that actually most people are in favour. If you go for a second hand one like we have, the actual turbine and, and sort of the gubbins that goes round up there in the tower and so on was about £70,000. But the total project came to about £235,000. There are some pretty good second hand ones about, which are relatively cheap, so they're still in effect very reliable machines. They're being taken down and sold because they're putting up bigger, newer ones. And so the old one's perfectly good, it's just being replaced by a bigger one. We had to look at visual impact, so that would be uh, putting a photo montage together to try and show what it might look like. Um, we had to do a desk-based survey on terms of would it impact on birds and things like that. Uh, we also had to use the manufacturer's uh, data on how noisy it was and show that you know, over a certain distance that would be less than the background noise. Where we didn't have the skills within the group, we, we got people in to help us. So maybe with the technical side of assessing a second-hand wind turbine, uh, we employed somebody uh, to assess that for us and to help us. We employed people to assess the tower to see if it was structurally sound. So for specific instances, we got people in to help us. There's some big things like planning for mission grid connection, the transmission of your Vodafone mobile phone sort of thing and television and radio all have these links and you have to avoid them. So this, this network that exists, you have to sort of go in between and finding those holes can take quite a while sometimes. You have to get permission from the electricity company to be able to plug it in and also find out how much they're going to charge you to do that, which can be quite a lot of money. So up to £70,000. The tower was the challenging bit in terms of getting it here. Uh, typically these days they're broken up into sections, but this being an old machine was a single length, 30 metres long. Uh, so it was almost impossible to get it around the corner up the farm track. And uh, we had to alter the road corner and all sorts to, to get it around. But eventually we sort of squeezed it around and, and here it is. Putting it up was actually a relatively, uh, just a long day. It was literally start in the morning and finish at night. It takes you 18 months before that to get in a position to do it on that day. 
It's about 30 metres tall um, to the hub and the blades are 29 metres in diameter. Uh, so in terms of the scale, that's supplying electricity over the year equivalent to about the 50 houses in the village. We're hoping it will produce in the region of 300,000 kilowatt hours a year. We looked at uh, how much CO2 we might save from the energy produced. I think it was about 150 tonnes, something like that, per, per year. The uh, turbine was up and running for about 10 years previously to, to us having it and the life expectancy is about 25 years. With careful um, maintenance and with retaining money for, for repair and renovation, this will keep going for at least 15 years. It, it could be like an old car, you can keep them going if you, if you just maintain it properly. The generator uh, is turned by the wind, the meter rotates round, um, both ways actually because we do consume some, uh, but the, the reading of the meter is sent half hourly uh, to the electricity company. We are then paid by them for the electricity uh, monthly, which is really good, but then uh, we are also due the subsidy from the other uh, power companies around the country, uh, which is the feed-in tariff and that will give us the bulk of our income. We were very lucky to get this because we uh, put it up in the interim period at the beginning of the feed-in tariff scheme and so we were transferred across to the feed-in tariff scheme even though we put a second-hand wind turbine up. People often ask, D does my electricity bill go down if I invest? Well, it doesn't. Um, we we'll pay you some money which you can pay your electricity bill with but your electricity bill won't go down because the electricity from this turbine goes into the grid, down, down the wire, and spreads out into the grid. And we're, we're just selling it to the grid in general. Really pleased to have it. I'm really pleased to see it. I don't. I think it's a thing of quite attractive proportion. It, it's a nice thing to have around. The impact on the landscape, for me, appears to be relatively small. Uh, Obviously it's there and you can see it, but in terms of other impacts, it's very low impact really. Uh, we haven't seen any dead birds and we haven't seen any dead bats and the farmer's still farming his field and it seems fine. You have to be within two or three hundred metres to hear a faint distant noise from this turbine. I'm quite convinced that no no householder, no occupier of any of the houses near this can hear the turbine, quite sure of it. We've given ourselves 15 years to pay it back. At the moment, um, we're looking like we might be generating 230,000 kilowatt hours a year, which might be generating in, in the first year about 50 to 60,000 pounds. So it's actually looking pretty good because of the feed-in tariff that's going to be about 20 or 30,000 pounds a year for the village. How that is spent will partly depend on what they want to do. Now, people might say, well, let's have another one then. My wife and I have invested 2,000 pounds each, which is quite a stretch for, for our resources. We think we will earn between five and 8% per annum on our investment. We do have to have that patience, and we've had to tell our other investors as well that they need that patience. The idea that a local community would actually take the lead role here was, was a key one. We actually think it's a, a crucially important thing that we do something about the ridiculous consumption of energy in this country, um, of non-sustainable energy that is. We felt that this was an excellent combination. Community, environment, things went really well together. Can other people do this? I think Yes, with provisos in that you do need a windy place to put a turbine and have a friendly landlord that will allow you to put it there. Obviously wind is a, still a fairly good bet because it's good value for money.